And that's what they did. Okay, now let's take it to foods. So we talked about chemicals. Uh, food contamination with chemicals could be also major cause of immune reactivity against food, allergy, and possibly autoimmunity. So if we take peanuts, right? It has about 60% protein. Protein is like a necklace with lots of beads of different colors. So, so each one of those are one amino acid, we see each one of those. Let's say this is about 200, 300 amino acids. So the, our digestive enzymes, when function well, will break that to single peptides. This is a peptide. And these are single amino acids. Get absorbed and they feed our body. That's the fuel for our cells. Now, if one peptide is not being digested, the T-Rex cell, you remember the good T-Rex cell? Blocking any immune reaction to that. And the result is no antigen presentation, no immune reactivity against peanut proteins. So the body has different level of protection. If the digestive enzymes do not work properly, then your T-Rex cell is going to take care of that. So remember that. There is only one peptide in here which is undigested. But what if? The digestive enzymes do not work. Now you have many. Why? Because those chemicals are bound to, and digestive enzymes cannot do their job properly. And so no matter how active the T-Rex cell is, we'll block one of those. How about this? They will go to the immune cells. Our immune system will react. We make antibody against, against those. Now, uh, we make antibody against the chemicals as well as the food proteins set the stage for development of autoimmune disease. So that's why <laughs> this is another test that I developed for food immune reactivity. And, and I used red wine because red wine is really good for you. And by the way, there's couple publications that red wine can repair the gut barriers. Other alcohol is going to cause leaky gut, but resveratrol from red wine is the only one can help repair the gut barriers. So enjoy your red wine, especially in this area, right? So if we look at wheat, for example, all these disorders, look at this. Almost every single disorder, lupus, arthritis, could be associated with food immune reactivity in this particular case is wheat immune reactivity. And the same thing for milk I have. So question, why are we reacting to food that 20 years ago, 30 years ago, we did not react to that? And the answer is because they are contaminated with chemicals. Am I blocking you away or? <laughs> so that's why for wheat, I came out with another test. If you do classical testing of, of uh, celiac disease or, or wheat immune reactivity uh, or non-celiac gluten sensitivity, most laboratories are doing just these two tests, this one and this one. If you do that only, you miss 50% of the cases. So that's why I came out with this new test, because of my passion in the field, and we detect the other 50% who were missed before. Then, an individual reacts to wheat. You say you have, you have non-celiac gluten sensitivity and you send home that guy or that lady and then you, you, you put them on gluten-free diet. We know gluten-free diet is good. We saw already uh, in the first couple slides. Uh, but what if that person is going to react to some of the foods you are replacing with? 
some egg for milk, for example, is equally uh, guilty, and people can react to milk, which we have the evidence that cross reaction. But in some individual, it could be potato or rice or corn. And so therefore, we have to be careful to make sure that the food which we are replacing with gluten or wheat, they are not going to react to them. That's why we have to, you have to do testing. And so these are all disorders associated with milk. They are not as ex extensive as wheat, but they are plenty. Okay, this journal called Nutrient, nice name, right? I did another research, it took 400 people and wanted to see, these are healthy subjects. No autoimmune disease, no problem at this level. And we found actually about 20% of them had antibodies against wheat, antibody against milk. And the next question was that, what percentage of those who had reaction to wheat and milk react against their own brain tissue, half of those. So another meaning, 10% of the population walking on the street as being healthy today can develop neuroautoimmune disorders such as multiple sclerosis or ALS 10 years down the road. And so therefore that's where clinicians like uh, Dr. Ambridge can do testing and take preventive measure by removing the triggers. So this is another slide, you, you guys should enjoy it. <laughs> right, just remember, please, none of these are healthy, including, this was one of my favorite food. Chicken, uh, there's a special name in India, yeah. yeah. Tandoori, thank you. Yeah. Thinking that the color actually is saffron. Saffron, you know, is very expensive. But they are not using saffron. They are using food coloring. Yes. Yes. So, all of these. Alcohol and plastic, you know what the alcohol does to plastic? Dissolving the plastic, the plastic material goes into the alcohol and you drink it. The next one that is important also, heat. Already we talked about cold also can occur, right? Heat can also dissolve the plastic and we drink. And the third one is oil. Please never buy oil in a plastic container. Remember that. Because most chemicals are oil soluble. And so therefore, if you buy your canola oil, buy it in glass bottle. And so now there are some activities. I think it's one of the Kraft, for example, started experimenting with natural colorants. And they are planning to replace most of these with natural coloring rather than those toxic chemicals, which is good news, of course. So food colorants can cause also all of this. Remember, failure in oral tolerance. Remember, that was the root cause of autoimmunity. Failure in oral tolerance. Meaning that your cells do not work. And so, in relation to food coverings, uh, this is again a protein, and this is the enzyme cutting that to amino acids, right? When the food covering is binding to the protein, the enzyme cannot work anymore. Especially when we get older. That's why we need more digestive enzymes. So when we do food testing, we look at raw versus cooked that no other laboratory is doing because raw versus cooked food are two different worlds in the laboratory setting. And uh, 
What is that guy right here? Meat glue. You know what's meat glue? It's an enzyme made by a mold. They are using in the restaurant industry to glue pieces of meat together. We'll make steak out of that. Don't look at me. I, 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 I ate it without knowing it. Many times. You go to certain restaurant, they offer that steak to you guys. And so therefore you have to be careful because now we are talking about not only meat, we are talking about they add to the um, milk, casein, they add to that the enzyme and many other factors. So now we are talking about meat, or a mixture of 10 other stuff that we don't even think about because they are not supposed to be there. So meat glue. And uh, gums, you can react to them immunologically. Food coloring without some oils, they have proteins in them called oleocenes. Some people can react to that. This is one of the most important ones right there, lectins and agglutinins. Lectins and agglutinins can bind, they're, first of all, they're part, you know, they're made by beans, they're part of the beans. If you don't cook the beans well, those lectins and agglutinins can attack your cells in the gut, cause damage, diarrhea, leaky gut, and autoimmunity. So you have to be careful. Okay, now in relation to more about food as a cause of autoimmunity, I just put two slides to show you that certain food we eat can cause autoimmunity. So this is a, a patient with rheumatoid arthritis, patient with scleroderma. It's a, you know, the skin becomes very tight and it's a, an autoimmune disease. So they took blood from patient with scleroderma, they purified it almost 100%, and then reacted it with so many foods. Out of so many foods, wheat germ was one of them. This is not wheat germ, agglutinins, it's a part of the, the germ of the wheat. This is not wheat grass. This is part of the kernel. And peas, corn, and spinach. And there are many other cases that you'll see. Corn and spinach and soy are autoimmunogenic. For example, in Japan, instead of having multiple sclerosis, they have a myelitis optica, which is equivalent almost to MS. Why? Because they eat a lot of soy and spinach. Another one is lupus. If you also do exactly the same experiment, the antibody from blood of patient with lupus purified 100% react with spinach, corn, soy, and carrot. So maybe for lupus, we should remove all those four from their diet. Who is doing that? Only couple functional neurologists that I know. So you already, you know, we have this, um, I wrote seven articles in this journal Dr. Amrich has a copy with him, and if you guys want to read that, it will be available to you guys uh, through Dr. Amrich. So, I talked about chemicals as a cause of autoimmunity. I talked about food, or combination of chemicals plus food, as a cause of autoimmunity. Few are, few, just few about infection. Not a lot, just a couple slides about infection but I have a, at least 300 slides about the role of infections in autoimmune diseases. So here you see that mucose journal called mucosal immunology, that performer as gingivalis can release a toxin, the toxins open the tight junctions in the gut, get into the blood, we react against that, the antibody can go to the joint, and then destruction of the joint after five to 10 years can result in um, osteoarthritis like in my mother. Now we know the mechanism. So here, periodontitis, perfumonas, and the pathogenesis of rheumatoid arthritis. 
So this is not a question whether or not the bacteria can cause autoimmune disease. They are talking about pathogenesis of autoimmune disease. And this is a new panel that will be out in two or three months. Um, we can measure antibodies against 30 different infectious agents which are involved in autoimmune diseases, just in a single test, including Lyme disease, including all those, you know, it's a combination of parasites, uh, bacteria, viruses, spirochetes, name it, mycoplasma, chlamydia, herpes, all that, hepatitis. So that's 45, 50 years of experience. That's why the message is predictive antibodies. If we detect antibody at early stage against the environmental triggers, we can remove the triggers and reverse the course of autoimmune disease. That's my really tonight's message. That's the functional neurology message. And so let's continue a few slides in here. That's why also I developed this panel called Array 5. We measure antibodies simultaneously against 24 different tissue antigens from the gut all the way to the brain. Just single blood test. And so we can find where is the uh, weakness in the body. And so based on that, find the triggers, remove the triggers, and fix the weakness in the body. So the message? Environmental diseases are not curable, but they are preventable if you detect that at early stage. Because there are three stages of our immunity. Stage one, I may, I may be in stage one right now, I don't know. Okay. So elevated antibodies, but no symptoms or lots of functionality. So lots of people can have antibodies. But the antibodies yet did not damage the tissue in order to suffer from. But five years later, 10 years later, get to this stage, we call that autoimmune reactivity. Elevated antibodies with symptoms, loss of function, but no severe destruction of the tissue associated with the disease. So the patient has some symptoms and all the weaknesses, but it's not 100%. But unfortunately, the autoimmune disease where elevated antibodies with significant symptoms, laboratory testing, everything's abnormal, and significant loss of functionality. So, ladies and gentlemen, our role is to detect autoimmunity at this stage, and the latest will be this stage, but when it is at this stage, the only thing the functional medicine doctor can do for you is to stop it not to become worse than what it is. But we are interested in prevention, therefore we have to detect it at this level, hopefully. Find the triggers, remove the triggers, reverse the course of autoimmune disease. Okay. That's my body, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is when I was in the college. <laughs> okay? So, lots of eggs and, you know, french fries and all of this junk food, right? Got this biosis. Bad bacteria is high, good bacteria is low. That's why really when we talk about you are what you eat, you are what you feed your gut bacteria. Bad food, overgrowth of bad bacteria. Good food, overgrowth of good bacteria. So there's a gentleman who works in my laboratory. He does some of these graphics, right? So. On purpose, he put some nuts over there. <laughs> <laughs> so, healthy, okay, right there. 
fruits, vegetables, similar to Dr. Brenner said, right? In the beginning, good food, good bacteria. So I just added these last 10, 15 slides. Uh, scientific American mind. And there was regular scientific American and there was scientific American mind. The whole issue is about nutrition for our brain. And they go through some of these articles, but when you read those articles, they lead you to another 20 other articles published in 2015 and 2014, and it's fascinating to read. So that's what the typical American diet can damage the immune system. This is not me, this is scientific America. And so what do you see underneath, over there? Over here? Donuts, right? Okay. Now, just, if we take, this is really typical American diet. Mind destructive diet. Mind destructive diet. So what do you have here? Okay, the cheeseburger. A little, a little bit vegetables. <laughs> and then you have the french fries and then the sodas. This is the three worst combinations. So what will happen? Change in the gut flora diversity and release of bacterial toxins. You are with me, right? Then what will happen? Inflammation. Cytokines are you know, some kind of messengers in our body. And if cause release of those infl inflammatory cytokines, that's exactly what they cause in our body. That's precursor of autoimmunity. So interference with serotonin and generation of neurotoxic metabolites, gut barrier disturbance, and breach in the barriers. When we said the gut barriers are open, that's the gateway to autoimmunity. So that's exactly that food can do to us. So the end result will be depression, schizophrenia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, autism, brain autoimmunity, and interference with the brain function. So this is really, there's a connection. Again, this, this is not my, I made the slide based on what, whatever was written in those articles. Next. In 2014, 23-year-old genetic student, that's his name, did a study with his father, a professor of genetics. Uh, and find out how processed food after gastrointestinal bacteria. So for 10 days, the only thing he had was McDonald's, French fries, and sodas for 10 days, only. So around the sixth or seventh day, Tom was feeling lethargic and had trouble sleeping. Are, are, are you surprised? <clears throat> By the day, eighth day, McDonald's tasted horrible to him. <laughs> Towards the end of the 10, 10 days, he became constipated. Because the gut bacteria disturbed completely. Good bacteria was gone, the bad bacteria was growing. So after 10 days, he experienced a severe drop in the flora diversity. So his father cultured his stool before and after. And if, for example, before going on this diet, he had 100 different bacteria. After a bad diet, he had only few good bacteria. All of them were replaced with bad bacteria. Simple as that. Now, this is another fascinating experiment. Of course, for again, because of the time concern that I didn't put all the slides. There are slides showing exactly from where, which article I took all of this. But the reference always is top right there, okay? Right there, 2015. 
nature communication. So what they did in this experiment, they took 20 African Americans living in Pennsylvania, right? And they took the same number of South Africans and they changed their diet. Guess what happened? Okay. Um, so African American in America, high animal fat, low fiber, high sugar. But the one in Africa, low animal fat, high fiber, low sugar, exactly opposite. When you switch this, their functionality also changes. The my microbiome changes completely. If African American in United States had blood pressure, had other abnormalities, sugar, they started having in Africa only after 10 days or 15 days, they started having symptoms. And so they stopped the experiment. So here, how much diet can change our functionality? Mind diet slows cognitive decline with aging. What is mind diet actually is Mediterranean diet. It's not, so mind Mediterranean dietary approach to systolic hypertension, diet intervention for neurodegenerative delay. That's mine, mine diet. So what they did, they took 960 adults, put them on this special diet, and then test for global cognition, memory, uh, semantic memory, <coughs> perceptual organization, speed, working memory, and all of that. And findings, okay? Slow cognitive decline. This is almost, you know, a further support to Dr. Bredesen's study. So slow actually brain dysfunction, the diet, and they scored you know, they match 7.5 years younger when, you know, like uh, neurologists tested them. Diet could change their behavior and their functionality by 7.5 years they became younger. So we can make ourselves through diet to become older or to become younger. Then, in Bordeaux, almost the same finding, really. You know, it's uh, uh, they did a higher adherence to Mediterranean diet was associated with preserved white matter, microstructure in the multiple brain areas, up to a decade after dietary assessment. Adopting a Mediterranean diet also appears to lower the risk of stroke in individuals at at high vascular risk. So if you have history of cardiovascular disease, diet can prevent that. So it's proven by thousands. And look at this article. I think they took 22,000 people in one of the islands in Greek. Okay, and then we concluded we conducted a population-based perspective investigation involving 22,000 adults in Greece. We used proportional hazard regression to assess the relationship between adherence to the Mediterranean diet and total mortality. Greater adherence to the traditional Mediterranean diet is associated with significant reduction in total mortality. So diet and health. New England Journal of Medicine, 22,000 people. Then they took 20, 247 patients with depression. Really the goal of this study was to see whether or not the psychotherapy works. 
That's the goal of the study. So the control they chose to give them just diet coaching, give them some salmon, fruits, vegetables, tuna, and nuts, that was really the goal of having controls. Wasn't supposed to be part of the study. But the outcome of this was so good that after 15 months, both treatments equally reduced depression significantly. So if they did psychotherapy versus diet, they got similar results. Why? Because you, if you connect the dots, the bacterial toxins were changing the behavior, remember, the, in the brain? So here, by diet, you are changing the gut bacteria. Gut bacteria is not going to release the toxins, and therefore less depression. So this was the, you know, the, the <coughs> nutritional neurology diet that they, they used. So fruits, vegetables, legumes, nuts, red wine, fish, healthy fats, lean meats, and fermented foods. Everything is good. So now, in the last few slides, I'm going to give you, I'll finish by five to 10 minutes, just because you want also to see the mechanism and the evidence. That was all of that taken from scientific American mind. And so, let's say you go to Dr. Ambridge, he's giving you probiotics. If he will give you probiotics by itself, without proper diet, those probiotics may not survive in your body. There will be in and out. But if he will tell you, every time you take probiotics, also take some fiber, such as flaxseed, which I take every morning, zealia, right? Choose, you, know, you can choose for yourself. Those are the combination of the two I'm using when I take my probiotics. So what do you do by this exactly is in here, right? Fiber is feeding the microbiota. So the microbiota grows, releasing acetate, butyrate, propionate. Those three factors is going to activate which type of cell? Remember the third cell the T-Rex cell. Activate the T-Rex cell. What is the function of the T-Rex cells? To keep homeostasis in the gut and in our body to balance the immune system. So this is the mechanism. And T-Rex cells divide, blocking what? Inflammation. So this is one mechanism of action. That's why probiotic, you have to feed them in order to survive in your body. What do you see in here? Vi just look at the vitamins. Vitamin A, vitamin B3, vitamin D3, okay? And which cell is that? Remember the fox? So that's the most important cell in our body. Vitamin D goes to that, right? So our cells, the cells involved in the immune system, need to be fed with vitamin A, vitamin D, and vitamin B. That's really the message. I'm not going to explain this to you, you know to go through neurological mechanism and all of that. Very simple. Our cells involved in the immune system, especially the T-Rex cells, need vitamin A, vitamin B, vitamin D. And guess what? Adipocytes release all kinds of factors inhibit the T-Rex cell function. Next. What do you see in here? That's vitamin A, right? So this is the structure of the gut. Again, T 
T-Rex cells, homeostasis, oral tolerance. So, carrot juice, carrot, especially carrots. Gut microbiota, release of all kinds of factors, activating the immune system, activating T-Rex cells, causing immune homeostasis. The same thing here, vitamin B9, T-Rex cells, reduction of regular sun, immune homeostasis. That's why you take your multivitamins. Don't listen to those guys who are telling you if you take your vitamins, your urine is going to be expensive. <laughs> it is enough, 5% of the vitamin that you take will be absorbed. These cells need a little bit of that, but you know, you have to take your multivitamins in order to feed your immune cells. Another one, active form of vitamin D3. Effect on what? Macrophages, T cells, and B cells. Those are the three most important soldiers around body. So before, like winter, for example, you guys want to have your uh, uh, flu shots, right? Why don't you take some of these vitamins to enhance your line of defense, your immune defense? Because some of those vaccines are going to have negative effect on your immune system rather than having positive effect. Another one, what do you see here? Okay. Cruciferous vegetables. Cruciferous vegetables. They are anti-cancer because they have three indole carbonyl. It's anti-cancer. And again, it's activating the T-Rex cells. So that's additional. Very, very important. Broccoli is anti-cancer. That's the mechanism. Now, this is again another article connecting the gut to the brain. Host microbiota constantly control maturation and function of microglia in central nervous system. You feed your bacteria. The bacteria in your gut is going to enhance functionality of the cells in your nervous system. <laughs> I think you know this is very, very important. So this is gut microbiota, complex carbohydrates such as zillion husk, hemp seed, and flax seed. These are the three I'm taking every day. Short chain fatty acid, acetate, butyrate, propionate, activating the microglia, healthy neurons, connection between gut and the brain. Getting almost to the end. You see it's 8 o'clock. And there are more that you can see that here, how microbiota can affect your immune health. And you remember the V? I said the opposite to the pyramid, right? This is the last slide. There's one more slide, but this is really the best message that you can take home. So the last slide, what do we have in here? That the heart of the matter is breach of the barriers. We have gut barriers, we have skin barriers, we have lung barriers, we have blood-brain barriers. So breach of the barriers can result in autoimmunity. So if we have lost IgA in our digestive tract, low or high acid also, low or high acid is bad. And that cause thin layer of the mucus in the gut. Inactive digestive enzymes. Undigested proteins and peptides. Our food is not digested properly. Undigested lectins and agglutinins, such as wheat germ agglutinin. 
high salt diet, high salt diet work against T-Rex cells in a favor of T helper 17, which is in a favor of autoimmunity. So reduce the salt as much as possible. High sugar diet, we went through this. Artificial food coloring, emulsifiers, organic solvents, nanoparticles. You take some medications, they are put in nanoparticles and the manufacturers are very proud that they made these, but that affects also the immune system, nanoparticles. Microbial enzymes such as meat glue, bacterial toxins, yeast, medications, all of these can affect the integrity of the gut, barriers, the blood-brain barriers, the lung barriers, the skin barriers, name it. No protection. So what choice do we have to use some of these factors that I mentioned before from A to Z? Vitamin A is good for immune function. Already I showed you the evidence. Vitamin D3 is good for immune function. The cruciferous vegetables are very good for immune system. High potency probiotics, very important. Also, you feed the probiotics with psyllium, hemp, and flaxseed. Uh, these are some bacterial antigens, digestive enzymes, glutamine, N-acetylcysteine, your fish oil, Saccharomyces boulardii, oil of oregano, gelatin from bone broth. If you look all the way back there, bone broth is part of your menu, right? Why is that? It's good for your digestive tract and it's good for your, your back, you know, good microbiota. And vitamin E, vitamin C, and zinc. So all of these, plus many others I mentioned during these few you know, uh, articles in the last 15 minutes, very important, the message is that through diet, we can prevent and reverse the course of autoimmune diseases. So ladies and gentlemen, the message to take home is first detect. So you have to go to a functional medicine doctor to help you to detect um, the environmental triggers effect on your immune system at the early stage as possible. Then learn which triggers are involved, remove them, and then repair the barriers. Repair the barriers through all those mechanisms I explained to you tonight. And with that, I'm ready to uh, answer any questions you have.